We should glory in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, porque en él tenemos la salvación, la vida y la resurrección, y por él hemos sido salvados y redimidos, through whom we are saved and delivered. Entering into the celebration of our, the sacred, sacred mysteries of our Passover, let us sing, cantemos, lift high the cross, alzad la cruz, en la página 4 del folleto, on page 4 of the worship booklet.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Dear brothers and sisters, tonight the Holy Mother Church begins the Sacred Tree Dwarf. What we celebrate today, tonight, tomorrow, and then Saturday evening is a single act of worship, remembering the Paschal mystery of Jesus, his death, resurrection to new life and our participation in that. It's a wonderful story. It's the most important news that we will ever hear. So let us acknowledge our sins, the times we may have closed our ears and our hearts to God, and ask that God forgive us. Lord, in the Eucharist, you call us together to be one in you but we fail to set our differences aside and to build up love and justice among us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Cristo Jesús, viniste a servir y no a ser servido. Enséñanos a servirnos unos a otros en amor y humildad. Cristo, ten piedad. Cristo, ten piedad. Lord, in the Eucharist, you continue to share yourself with us, but when we share we often measure and weigh our gifts. Lord, have mercy. Lord. Dios Todopoderoso, tenga misericordia de nosotros. Perdone nuestros pecados y nos lleve a la vida eterna. Amen. Amen.
Oremos. Dios nuestro, reunidos para celebrar la Santísima Cena en la que tu Hijo Unigénito, antes de entregarse a la muerte, confió a la Iglesia el nuevo eterno sacrificio, banquete pascual de su amor. Concédenos que de tan sublime misterio brote para nosotros la plenitud del amor y de la vida. Por nuestro Señor Jesucristo, tu Hijo, que vive y reina contigo en la unidad del Espíritu Santo, y es Dios por los siglos de los siglos. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month shall stand at the head of your calendar. You shall reckon it the first month of the year. Tell the whole community of Israel. On the 10th of this month, every one of your families must procure for itself a lamb one apiece for each household. If a family is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join the nearest household in procuring one and shall share in the lamb, in proportion to the number of persons who partake of it. The lamb must be a year old male and without blemish. You may take it from either the sheep or the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. And then, with the whole assembly of Israel present, it shall be slaughtered during the evening twilight. They shall take some of its blood and apply it to the two doorposts and the lintel of every house in which they partake of the lamb. That same night, they shall eat its roasted flesh with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. This is how you are to eat it, with your loins girt, sandals on your feet, and your staff in hand. You shall eat like those who are in flight. It is the Passover of the Lord. For on this same night, I will go through Egypt striking down every firstborn of the land, both man and beast, and executing judgment on all the gods of Egypt. I, the Lord. But the blood will mark the houses where you are. Seeing the blood, I will pass over you. Thus, when I strike the land of Egypt, no destructive blow will come upon you. This day shall be a memorial feast for you, which all your generations shall celebrate with pilgrimage to the Lord as a perpetual institution. The word of the Lord. Sin copy, so 
comunión es la comunión de la sangre de Cristo. done for me. The cup of salvation I will take up, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. The blessing cup is a communion, es la comunión de la sangre de Cristo. Mucho le cuesta al Señor la muerte de sus fieles. Señor, dos, yo soy tu siervo, hijo de tu esclava, rompiste mis cadenas. tu nombre, Señor. My vows to the Lord I will pay in the presence of all his people. Lectura de la primera carta del apóstol San Pablo a los Corintios. Hermanos y hermanas, yo recibí del Señor lo mismo que les he transmitido, que el Señor Jesús, la noche en que iba a ser entregado, tomó pan en sus manos y pronunciando la acción de gracias, lo partió y dijo, esto es mi cuerpo que se entrega por ustedes, Hagan esto en memoria mía. Lo mismo hizo con el cáliz después de cenar, diciendo, Este cáliz es la nueva alianza que se sella con mi sangre. Hagan esto en memoria mía siempre que beban de él. Por eso, cada vez que ustedes comen de este pan y beben de este cáliz, proclaman la muerte del Señor hasta que vuelva. Palabra de Dios.
praise and honor to you, Gloria and honor to thee, praise and honor to you. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Before the feast of Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to pass from this world to the Father. He loved his own in the world, and he loved them to the end. The devil has already induced Judas, son of Simon the Iscariot, to hand him over. So during the supper, fully aware that the Father had put everything into his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God, he rose from supper and took, took off his outer garments. He took a towel and tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with a towel around his waist. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Master, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, What I am doing you do not understand now, but you will understand later. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, Unless I wash you, you will have no inheritance with me. Simon Peter said to him, Master, then not only my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus said to him, Whoever has paid has no need except to have his feet washed, for he is clean all over. So you are clean, but not all, for he knew who would betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. So when he had washed their feet and put his garments back on and reclined at the tables again, he said to them, Do you realize what I have done for you? You call me teacher and master, and rightfully so, because indeed I am. If I, therefore, the master and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. I have given you a model to follow, so that, I, that I, ha, I have done for you, you should also do. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Praise and honor to you.
My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, from time immemorial, mothers and fathers, grandmothers and grandfathers, even aunts and uncles, have been asked by little voices at bedtime for a story. Often the child or the children want to hear a familiar story, one that they've heard many times before, a tale that makes them feel, I don't know, it's been a long time since I was a kid. Why do you suppose they like to hear the same story? And isn't it, isn't it amazing how people's ears per perk up immediately when they think a story is about to be told? wonder if you and I felt that way tonight or tomorrow or on Saturday. When Deacon Asterio read the story of the night before Jesus' death, did your ears prick up? Did something move in you? And tomorrow, when the Passion will be read, is that simply a test of endurance? Are these stories like m movies that we've seen before and we know how they end? Or is it something else? What we hear these days, these three days, may be nothing less than the most important invitation we'll get in our lives. And that's the invitation to get caught up in God's story, the story that God tells in Jesus Christ. Think about what we just heard. It's the night before Jesus dies. In the second reading, St. Paul remembered what he had heard about that night how Jesus took bread, coarse bread, and broke it and said to those around the table with him, this is my body, given up for you. And then he took the cup and said, this is the cup of my blood that will be poured out for you. Drink deeply, because I shed it, because I love you. However, the gospel that Asterio read makes no mention of the bread. Yes, it's the night before Jesus dies, according to John's gospel, and doesn't talk about the cup. He's already talked about the bread of life in chapter 6. So what does he put in the place of Jesus breaking the bread and, and pouring out the cup? What does he do? Jesus picks up a pail of water, probably smelly water, because it came out of a well. And he took a rough cleaning cloth and he did what nobody would ever have foreseen or even wanted in a million years. He washed their feet. Maybe Peter speaks for all of us. Lord, you will never wash my feet. Stop it. There's something scandalously intimate about foot washing. Actually, Peter does understand that Jesus Christ is the Messiah, the Messiah of God. But this half-dressed Jesus who washes feet like a first-century Galilean servant. And then he tells Peter and the rest of the disciples and us to go and do likewise. That's a tall order. Brothers and sisters, we began Lent on that first Sunday 
listening how the devil had tempted Jesus in a fashion not too far removed with what Peter's doing. The three temptations that we've heard about in the desert can be summed up like this. The devil pointing his finger at God, Jesus and saying, you are God, so act like it. And remember how Peter tried to stop already. Before he ever reached that upper room, he wanted to stop Jesus' humility. And Jesus answered, get behind me, you Satan. Now Jesus warns Peter again, this time at the supper, at the last supper. If I do not wash you, you'll have no part in me. And then he goes ahead and washes Peter's feet. Why? And why do we memorialize it on Holy Thursday? Because the entire relation of human beings to, to God is to receive love and give back love, no matter what the cost. If Peter will not allow Jesus to care for him in this very earthy way, he will be refusing the gift of God's labor on his behalf. Peter would be saying, you can't love me in that way. You can't love us in that way. Jesus replies with an action that says to Peter and to us, I do not want to be the type of God that you imagine. I want to show you that only humility can love and be loved. I want to show you that death is the humblest act of all. For tomorrow, on Good Friday, Jesus will wash us again, this time in the humble flow of his own precious blood. So, like kids, will we listen to the story? To the extent we will receive it, our hearts will be stilled because we will be emptied as he was emptied and his followers have always been emptied in order to be filled with the fullness of God. Muy queridos hermanos y hermanas en Cristo, por lo menos son cinco las historias de lo que pasó la noche antes de que Cristo murió. En un momento que se llama la última cena. Cuatro de estas historias, los evangelios de Mateo, Marco, Lucas, y también la primera carta de San Pablo a los Corintios, la frase que hemos oído, escuchado esta noche. Estos cuatro se acuerdan en los detalles con cómo Cristo tomó el pan y bendijo a su Padre y lo pasó a sus discípulos diciendo, tomen y coman, porque esto es mi cuerpo que será entregado por ustedes. Y también en aquella misma noche, Él tomó el cáliz de nuevo bendijo a Dios y lo pasó entre ellos diciendo toman y beben todos de él porque este es el cáliz de mi sangre la sangre de la nueva y eterna alianza que será derramada por ustedes y por todos para el perdón de los pecados Haz, hagan esto en memoria de mí en cambio, el Evangelio que proclamó el diácono Asterio esta noche no habla del pan y vino, de la bendición 
y como Cristo partió todo entre ellos. Y en el Evangelio de San Juan, el cuarto Evangelio, Cristo ya ha hablado del pan que se bajó de los cielos en el capítulo 6. En este momento, en el capítulo 13, la noche antes de morir, en vez de encontrar la, el pan y la copa, encontramos un servidor. Encontramos el rechazo de Pedro, que no quería que el Mesías lavara sus pies. Y Cristo dice, si no me permite lavar de los pies, no tienes herencia conmigo. ¿Cómo entender eso? Es el doble sentido de la comunión. San Agustín, en el quinto siglo, hablaba de la experiencia de comulgar. Y él decía a la gente de su, su época, cuando te acercas a la comunión, oyes las palabras cuerpo de Cristo y respondes amén. Lo creo. Lo creo que este no es más pan. Es el cuerpo de Cristo. San Agustín dice, muy bien. Entonces, que sean el cuerpo de Cristo ustedes para que su respuesta sea verdadera. A comulgar. Nosotros profesamos nuestra fe que sí, este pan no es más pan, es el cuerpo de Cristo, su cuerpo entregado por mí y por todos. Y también yo soy parte del cuerpo de Cristo. Yo también tengo la misión de lavar los pies.
Señor, que nos amemos todos como nos ama Dios. Un mandamiento
In this time of the Lord's Passion, when Christ offered prayers and supplications to his Father with loud cries and tears, let us humbly beseech God that in answer to his Son's reverent submission, he may in mercy hear our prayers also. For Pope Francis, bishops, priests, and religious, that the Lord who gave the Church of this night the gift of the priesthood may bless and strengthen every one of them with the gift of this holiness and pastoral charity. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer. Por la Iglesia, para que en el gesto del lavatorio de los pies se rededique a sí misma a la vida de servicio y sacrificio abnegado, en especial por todos los que carecen de las necesidades de la vida, las personas sin hogar, los huérfanos, los refugiados, los inmigrantes, los hambrientos, los enfermos, los solitarios y los ancianos que están confinados en sus hogares. We pray, Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Escúchanos, Señor. For those preparing to receive the Easter sacraments all over the world, that God will lead them to a deeper awareness of the new life within them. We pray, Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Por aquellos que son perseguidos por su fe, para que el Evangelio proporcione fuerza y valor a sus corazones. Lord, hear our prayer. Escucha, no, Señor. For the gift of peace, that God will bring an end to terrorism and violence and help everyone to recognize the beauty and dignity of human life. We pray, Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Por todos los difuntos, para que las promesas de la Pascua puedan ser dadas a cada uno de ellos y que puedan participar en la gloria de la resurrección. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer. Escúchanos, Señor. For an end to all conflict and war especially in Ukraine, Israel, and Palestine, and for an openness of heart and mind to restore peace and quality of life for all. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer. Atiende, Señor, a las súplicas de tu pueblo, para que lo que no se atreve a esperar por sus propios méritos lo alcance por la pasión de tu Hijo, que contigo vive y reina por los siglos de los siglos. Amén.
Bendito sea Señor Dios todo el universo por este pan por fin de la tierra del trabajo del hombre que recibimos el Señor el salario que merecemos y el será para nosotros pan de vida eterna. Bendito sea Señor Dios todo el universo por este vino por fin de la vida del trabajo del hombre que recibimos de tu generosidad y ahora que presentamos y el será para nosotros bebida y salvación.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands. We praise and glory the same for our good and the good of all the Church. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries. For whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he is the true and eternal priest who instituted the pattern of of an everlasting sacrifice and was the first to offer himself as the saving victim, commanding us to make this offering as his memorial. As we eat this flesh that was sacrificed for us, we are made strong, and as we drink his blood that was poured out for us, we are washed clean. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope and me, your unworthy servant, and my assistant bishops, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servant, and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God living and true. Celebrating the most sacred day on which our Lord Jesus Christ was handed over for our sake, and in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, and and your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, and Chrysogonus, John and Paul, 
Cosmas and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help through Christ our Lord. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, which we make to you as we observe the day on which our Lord Jesus Christ handed on the mysteries of his body and blood for his disciples to celebrate. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer for our salvation and the salvation of all, that is, today, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven, to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice into his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven, of Christ, your Son, our Lord. We, your servants, and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts you've given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel, the just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us, who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through, 
Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Fiel es a la recomendación del Salvador, que siguiendo su divina enseñanza, nos atrevemos a decir, Padre nuestro que estás en el cielo, santificado sea tu nombre. Venga a nosotros tu reino. Señor de todos los males, concédeles la paz en nuestros días, para que ayudados por tu misericordia, vivamos siempre libres del pecado y protegidos de toda perturbación, mientras esperamos la gloriosa venida de nuestro Salvador Jesucristo. Tuyo es el reino. Señor Jesucristo, que dijiste a tus apóstoles, la paz les dejo, mi paz les doy. No tengas en cuenta nuestros pecados, sino la fe de tu iglesia, y conforme a tu palabra concede la paz y la unidad, tú que vivís a reinas por los siglos de los siglos. Amén. The peace of the Lord, la paz del Señor esté con todos ustedes. Y con tu espíritu. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Yeah. 
con tu muerte la vida al mundo. Líbrame por la diversión de tu cuerpo y de tu sangre, de todas mis culpas y de todo mal. Concédeme cumplir siempre tus mandamientos y jamás permitas que me separe de ti. Behold the Lamb of God. Este es el Cordero de Dios que quita los pecados del mundo. Dichosos los invitados a la cena del Señor. Señor, no sé ni me mientes en mi casa, pero una palabra tuya bastará para ser el cuerpo de Cristo. As we approach the table of the Lord, elevemos nuestros corazones y nuestras voces, we sing Bread of Life from Heaven, Pan de Vida Eterna, en la página 9 del folleto, on page 9 of the worship booklet. Bread of Life from Heaven, nos tu cuerpo y sangre, Break not the bread of Christ. 
sacrifice. Give it thanks for the youths gather on. Eat all of you and be satisfied. In Christ's presence, the news will be bound. Bread of life from heaven, no stars to God we sang there. We sang it when our souls endure, we feast remembering you. Then he compared the living upon the most gracious to grant corazón. Cristo es sustento que unirá a los miembros de cada nación.
Oremos. Concédenos Dios Todopoderoso, que así como somos alimentados en esta vida con la cena pascual de tu Hijo, así también merezcamos por ser saciados en el banquete eterno. Per Cristo nuestro Señor.
caro, panem perum, verba carna deficit, fit quet sanguis Christi merum, et incensus deficit. Firmandum cor sincerum, sala fides sufficit. Pange lingua gloria usi, par paris misteri. Ventris generosi, resa fudit glontium, nobis datus, nobis no. Supreme Noctecene, rescumbrent sunt fratribus, observat ale ce plene, Verbum caro paneverum, verba carna deficit, fit que sanguis Christi merum, et incensum deficit. Tanto mergo sacramentum, vinere marce lui, et antiquam documentum, no face da tritui. 
Prestet videt so plamentum, set so um det vektu i. Gjell.